If you're on a phone or a tablet, Right now, while you're listening to this episode, go to your app store and download the Couch to Active app. It really is the easiest way to listen to the podcast. Hey, hey there, friends. It's Lynn Lindberg here. And yes, you're a bad couch guru, but today is a special bonus edition. Today is a longer podcast, definitely more than the usual five minutes, because I was really thinking and realizing that even though we are about active lifestyles and getting active and moving, there's just so much going on in the world right now. And I do not know a single soul who is not saying, or I do not know a single soul who is saying, oh, life is raises, raises and rainbows. Like I can't even say it right. Roses and rainbows. It's all wonderful. Like it's really not for all of us in one way or another. And I just today sent an email out to my subscribers addressing this and talking about it. And I got to thinking and I thought, you know, I've got this podcast platform where even though I have a five minute episode every day of the week or or five days a week, I'm going to use it and just put out this special Saturday edition and, and talk a little bit more about uh, what's what's on my heart with all of this. What is this, right? With all of this. And what what I've done and how I've come to be where I am. And I know that's a whole bunch of nonspecifics, but, but basically, I, you know me. I've had quite a few chronic health issues that I've been dealing with that really slowed me down. And when I disclosed my weight, I had shared to you guys that uh, I know weight in the scale is a trigger thing, but these chronic illnesses had slowed me down enough that even though I was doing everything I could do, I was gaining weight um, in excess of like I've gained almost 50 pounds since the day I met my current husband. And now, finally, finally, right when COVID hit and the pandemic and then George Floyd, and everything going on right now. And then the killer bees. Remember that that was a thing? The killer bees? Yeah, they're still out there. Um, (laughs) I was starting to feel guilty about feeling good, because I'm not feeling awesome. But I'm feeling physically, and mentally the last couple weeks, better than I have in a really long time. And I think a big piece of that is because of my health issues that are, I've just really been relentlessly pursuing to fix and solve. I've fixed, um, fixed, excuse me, I've adjusted my diet and lifestyle around what I eat so that it really serves me well. And I'm not white knuckling food anymore, um, which you guys know, I've been really open about that. Uh, and, uh, and figuring out my sleep, which having older kids helps tremendously. Um, And then and also working from home helps helps tremendously and priorities. And so all of that combined with the fact that when the quarantine happened, I realized I needed to do some things to make sure that me as a huge extrovert, not not extrovert, like I have to be in the middle of attention, but extrovert, like, if I'm not around people, I get twitchy and lonely and my spirit just shrivels up and dies. I'm not one of those uh, people who are loving quarantine because it really fits their introvert needs, uh, which I completely respect. Uh, I don't understand, but I do respect it. (laughs) And, And so I've been feeling feeling better than ever. And I really attribute a lot of it to some of the things that I have very deliberately done. And some of the things that I have spent time on and had the luxury of time to spend on them, and the luxury of the mental capacity to really dive in and study and learn and grow. And so what I want to do with you all right now is just have a real honest and very specific conversation share my heart. And I have a list of 
very tangible, specific things that I have done that have helped me thrive better than I thought I would during this time. And also has helped me deal with a lot of the anxiety that comes up with everything happening right now, because it's, it's, it's huge, because even, even with, you know, working through it all, it it still seeps in at the margins, right? It's, uh, it's still, you know, just it seems relentlessly coming in. So I'm going to go through a, a list of things and just tell you stories about my life and what's happening. And, and my goal and hope for you is that maybe you'll relate to some of this and you won't feel as alone in it. And maybe you'll take away um, something, some nugget that could be a tipping point or a turning point that could give you that renewed energy or that renewed a spirit or, or or something to, to to help you take a deep breath in and be able to lift your eyes, lift your shoulders, lift your heart and and help you stand a little bit taller with a little more peace this week also. So um the the first one uh, before I dive into to this list of things, I, I just want to put right out there very, very specifically, and we'll talk about this in more detail in a little bit. I, I've said before, and I'll say it again, with Black Lives Matter, that's one of the issues happening. I absolutely am on board with the fact that all Black lives matter, and that right now, focusing on this, it is important. There are some things happening that I'm seeing that are causing causing me some stress and probably you too, that are uh, things happening on the fringes that I think are detracting from the core of what's really important. And so I, I, I want to encourage all of us to know that yes, racism is an evil that we should not ever engage in. And in fact, if you are a racist, I hope that you change your ways before you ever give Couch to Active any of my any of your business, because I'm not interested in it. And that's part of the stance that I've taken. The skin that I can put in the game is putting out there that racism of any form is not something that Couch to Active tolerates. Okay. I just, I don't know, I just had to put that out there. All right, so, so all of this, COVID, you know, the schools, what's happening with schools, masks, the, you know, how they've become political, which is weird uh, to me, very, very weird to me. Yeah, all of it. Here's some things that I've done that have, that's really helped me. All right, number one is I came to a point where I realized that stressing out was no longer an option for me. Stressing out and just getting outraged and just like, oh my God, oh my gosh, not an option for me. And and the reason for that isn't necessarily because I read any, you know, self-help book or anything, or I, you know, I don't have any magic you know, whatever. (laughs) But it was my fibromyalgia diagnosis. After 20 years of being in high stress corporate environments, after so many years of being a type A personality who would just let that low level stress constantly hang over me, my body gave up. And I ended up with a fibromyalgia diagnosis. And so I now have a physical manifestation of what happens to somebody when they either go through a lot of trauma or a lot of stress, and for me it was both, that you don't deal with. And so I have to manage my stress. I have to proactively do this because if I don't, uh, my body actually, it's called a fibro flare. And those of you who have it, you know it's awful. You end up basically sleeping all day, every day, you end up just 
uh, everything hurts if somebody bumps into you. It actually feels like they punched you. Um, it's a really, really weird thing. And so, so the last couple of years since this fibromyalgia diagnosis, I have really made it a non-option to get what we call completely stressed out. And I know you know what I mean. And so sleep has been a big thing for me. Meditation has been a big thing for me. And when I say meditation, I mean, it really anything that calms your mind and puts you in a space that's more intentional. So that could be a, a, a walk in nature. That could be you know, the traditional meditation as you think of it. For a lot of people, it's prayer. Or uh, a lot of times for me, I'll go to meditate and then I wake up two hours later, (laughs) I just fall asleep. Um, So those are sleep, meditation. And believe it or not, for me, and I I don't know if this is for everybody, but for me, because I tend to be really success driven and really wanting to be successful, um, one small success gives me this dopamine calming effect. And so that could be uh, taking a moment and Marie Kondoing my, uh, you know, a drawer in my bathroom. I actually did that yesterday. I took one drawer in my bathroom and I organized it and I got rid of all the junk out of just that one drawer. Now the rest of the drawers are a disaster, but that one drawer, whoo, feels good. Uh, And that worked for me. Uh, Just one little success. So these are, these are practical things. So that's one, the one thing for me is stressing out is not an option. All right, let's talk a little bit more about current events. And this brings me to my number two. Number two thing for me that's really helped me manage all of this is to recognize the fake news. And in recognizing that fake news out there, not getting exasperated, not getting outrage, not letting my emotions flood me with so much cortisol that actually damages my health, but staying more pragmatic. Because folks, think about technology here. Think about what's been happening in just the last five years, 10 years, five years. For the first time in the history of mankind, the whole globe Pretty much the whole globe is connected at an instant and can communicate. And anybody with any idea, fact or fiction, can communicate. Okay, so take that and know that we're humans and humans are weird. Yeah? (laughs) Yeah, if you didn't believe it before, you'll believe it now. Humans are weird. So take those two things, multiply it by all kinds of different cultures, all kinds of different motivations. And, and we are essentially being scammed. We're allowing ourselves to be scammed by all this fake news out there. It's kind of like our grandparents are really elderly aging ones right now. The phone scams are such a big thing for them. And they get this phone call. And then they, you know, they're told they won a prize, but you have to give thousands of dollars over for that prize. And, and we in our generation look at that and think, Oh, my gosh, how in the world could they be scammed like that? Like, it's so obvious. Well, our generation is really getting scammed with fake news and false news. Um, in a really big way. And in fact, in a bigger way than we think. And a lot of it's a generational thing. And a lot of it is, is us being raised where, for the most part, when we were kids, we trusted what we saw in print. Now as adults, I'm in my late 40s. So now as adults, we still have that so written into our brain that you trust what is written that even though we know there's tons of fake news, even though we know we need to be careful, we still haven't figured it out yet. So why does this, our younger generation, (laughs) you guys are figuring this out way faster than us, so good for you. Why is this important? Why does this help reduce my stress? It helps me reduce my stress because it helps me get very real and practical about it. It helps me get out of the it should, it should, it should. And it, 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 we we shouldn't have fake news. We, we should have fact checking. We should have, you know, 
and and it puts me more into the oh no duh of course we've got this mess like <laughs> who would expect it to go any other way and and to recognize that that is there uh, has been really really helpful another thing that's been really helpful is um and and for those of you who are brand new to a episode like this this is an aside here um where I talk completely off topic of couched active. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the other side of Lynn. Um, another thing that's really help it, helped me with this is um, on the my other podcast I do called The Limbergs, and I'll, I'll put the link in the show notes. We had the opportunity, we, my co-host, um, aka husband, and I had the opportunity to interview um, Eric Rasmussen, who had just before all of this happened, written a white paper for NATO about malignant disinformation happening globally. And it was a nonpartisan paper, and it was based on research of what's actually happening out there, how many social media accounts are fake, how many Twitter accounts are fake, what's happening out there. And, um, And it was fascinating. It was really, really fascinating for me to see and for me to realize, oh my gosh. So so that's been really good for me to do. So I'll put a link to that interview in there. The, the second half is where we really talk more about social media. Um, really fascinating stuff. And it helps me realize, okay, this is just the online. And a whole lot of stuff happening online is not real life. A whole lot of it is, but a whole lot of it isn't. So that gives me comfort. Okay, number three. And this ties in right with number two. Another thing that helps me manage my stress, helps me manage mentally all of this is recognizing and reminding myself that there is a very different experience between talking to people and groups online and talking to people and groups in real life. Now, I know, I know that's a no duh one, right? Let me say that again. When we talk to people online, we know there's so many uh, uh, shit shows. I can't, I can't, I can't think of any other word. <laughs> I, I want a word that's stronger than that. Uh, happening online, where people are constantly attacking. We expect people to attack each other online, uh, and and it's just like awful. I mean, my community has a forum where people talk to each other in a way that I have never seen in real life, and I hang out with a lot of people in real life. Well, not so much nowadays, but you know what I mean. And in, but in real life, and when we really understand each other, there's, uh, we're, we're really a lot more civil, and we're really a lot more aligned overall. And so I'm, I'm looking at when I talk to people, I'm really working on parsing out the difference between talking to a real person and a real friend versus what we're seeing online, because they're two very, very different things. Okay, so that's what's helping me. All right, number four, Black Lives Matter. Yes, I'm both appalled, amazed, and not at all surprised that we've been able to take the fact that human beings matter and turn it into a polarized topic, like everything, right? Like masks, like COVID, like, you know, everything, everything. Now, I have spent, and I have to be careful about how I say this so you can understand the intent of where it comes from and everything. The last couple months, I have made a big effort and and this actually started before um, uh, before Floyd and before the riots and before the demonstrations. I started, making a big effort to spend time getting to know what I would call the other people who don't agree with me. So what I did 
is I first started by creating a list of about 20 documentaries that are documentaries about things I don't agree with written from the perspective of the person I don't agree with. Yeah, (laughs) this is hard work, let me mind you. This is not like, ooh, I'm a detective and this is going to be exciting, let's solve the murder mystery. Like, no, this is actually really hard work. And I've had to go into it and take a break from it and go into it and take a break, you know, go in for three days, take a break for a week. So I, I started doing that. Then I started going and visiting social groups, knowing I needed to keep that differentiation between real interactions with real people and social groups. And I started doing a lot of social listening and social questioning. So I've gone into quite a few groups and and basically I'll would search for something I don't agree with, listen and think, oh my gosh, that person is wackadoodle. They don't know what they're talking about. They're absolutely crazy. And then I would go in and, and study them. I'd read their website I'd listen to two or three hours of whatever documentation or podcast they have. I would even sign up for some of their newsletters to see what kind of indoctrination they have uh, to really put myself in a position to really kind of understand more of what's the pulse on happening in all these different, different groups. Um, so, you know, like for ex- one of them, for example, is the group is some groups who think Black Lives Matter is um, bogus. Uh, and I'm like, that is completely wackadoodle. Where are they coming from? Like, whoa, how could anybody think that? And then I went in and, and, and read about it. So what I came up with so far, and this is my own personal hypothesis of this, is and it surprised me. I really didn't think this would happen. But what surprised me is when I went to these people that I thought were what I would call crazy, you know, uh, batshit crazy people. Uh, the world is going to hell in a handbasket, you know. <laughs> uh, I went in and I and I understood two things. One, we all on all ends of the spectrum, except for some very, very radical fringes. Uh, But remember, those radical fringes are, um, they're not the majority. So, but that's another one for later. We all are so much more aligned than we realize. At our core, even coming from different religions and different political views and different stances, things that look so polarized online and so polarized in our media and so polarized in the news. When I went in and said, okay, what does this crazy person really think? What does this wackadoodle group really think? What is, you know, overall, we are way more aligned And we agree on the vast majority of things. And so we say, okay, well, what's what's the problem? What's one of the big things happening? Part of the problem is we aren't listening to each other. We're just pointing fingers and saying, that's crazy. And then we have this this new term, right? I love all these fashionable terms that we don't hear at all. And then all of a sudden, wow, everyone's saying it. Cancel culture. That's the word of the week, right? Cancel culture. So we have this like, oh, you're crazy. Cancel culture you. Stop following you. Unfriend you. Whatever. And the problem with that is because then you cut yourself off from being able to see how far apart you really are, or if you're just being played by all these hyped up headlines. And we know we're being played by hyped up headlines, but the work of coming together, the work of deciding if we're all together working together is such hard work and exhausting work. And and most of us, we don't have the luxury to even spend that kind of time or even want to. I mean, let me tell you, (laughs) 
Yeah, some of these were hard to listen to, but for the vast majority, I've got to tell you, we are so much more aligned. Here's where we go wrong. We think we know what the other thinks. And so when I hear a group, this is this happened on all sides of all spectrums. I looked at the Black Lives Matter, the people who are, you know, on the far extremes of that. I looked at um, you know, the political Democrat, Republican, people who are on the far extremes of that, the masks, people, you know, who are on the far extremes of what do we do with masks versus COVID versus, you know, public health. I mean, I did I dove in and and again, I can't say I researched because I did no research. I did a whole bunch of reading up. Yeah, big difference. Big difference between research and reading up. So the problem and the mistake all these groups are doing that I'm seeing is again, they think they have a picture of what the other is. The our Democrats think they have a picture of who the Republicans are. They think they know they're right, and there's no convincing them otherwise. Same with the Republicans think they have a picture of what the Democrats are. And they think they're right, and they there's no convincing them otherwise. This is happening everywhere. And guess what? When you think you know the other, but you haven't actually really gotten to know the other, it's it's a powder keg. Yeah. And when you sit down with that podcast I mentioned, I'll, that I'll put the link from the Limbergs with Eric Rasmussen, who wrote the white paper for NATO about efforts of malignant disinformation that are happening in order to spread people further and further apart, put a wedge in that divide and crank that divide and that chasm open further and further. So in our minds, we have this perception, we are so divided. That's a really dangerous place. And so that's, that's a big part of why, why I'm here using my platform to talk about this. And to just ask and encourage you, I I don't want to tell you where to sit politically. I don't want to tell you where to sit on anything. Freedom is something I value tremendously. But I do want to tell you that I have gone in and I have really looked carefully and really looked at the sources. And we are so much more aligned than we realize. That gives me hope. And that makes me feel uh, a little bit better about all of this, even though it's really, really hard. The next thing that helps me feel better about it, number five, is to remind ourselves that the extreme positions are not the majority, they're just loud. The extreme positions, the news media likes to pump them up because it sells sells papers. <laughs> it's, it sells eyeballs, right? Eyeball space. And so the extremes are, they're really, um, they're loud, but they're small. And so there's, yeah, there's a lot of things, a lot of concerns we could go in there. But but to just remind yourself to really look at, at what's happening and be radically pragmatic and radically, like, really look at the facts, really understand before you get, um, you know, just crazy uptight. The next one, number six, that's really helped me is to remind myself that my job right now is to help people figure out how to build bridges with each other. Because the divide is already there. Pointing fingers, whew, we are expert level, like PhD level up, you know, 10,000 points. I don't know. Ask your, ask your kids, how does that game, how do games work that way? Um, we're really good at pointing fingers. We are terrible at building bridges and we're even worse at listening to each other. And so that's partly why I'm doing this podcast today is I really, really want to encourage you also to pause and really ask questions and really listen. And then later, if you say, yeah, they're totally crazy, uh, that that's fine. But at least you have a better understanding and, and you'll see them more as a human as opposed to a um, somebody who's just crazy and it's too easy to dehumanize. Whew. Okay. Then 
With all of that, I have three more things that have really, really, really helped me. One is reminding that in my day-to-day life, I can't do it all. In fact, given how I live my life, I always have a massive to-do list, like way bigger than anything I'll ever get done. And, and I know I'm not alone in that. Uh, but one thing that is a just practical skill that's really helped me stress manage here is accepting reality, accepting the fact that I need to choose what I'm going to do and how I'm going to spend my time, or it will be chosen for me. And so, for example, yesterday I sat down and I went through my list of everything I want to do for the business, everything I want to get done personally, uh, all kinds of things. And then I pared it down to the most important ones. And no joke, it was over 150 items long. (laughs) Now, obviously, that's not going to happen. So then from there, I pared it down based on what my success criteria was at the time. And one was, uh, honestly, generating enough revenue to uh, keep this business up and afloat and keep, you know, expenses paid for my family. And another one was uh, keeping myself mentally and physically strong. Um, and then also being able to further the the mission of couch to active and in a life that I want to live. And from there, I pared it down to my top 10. And then I took my other my list of 150 items, set it aside. And I've been working just on my list of uh, top 10. And, um, and this podcast wasn't on it. Um, <laughs> I just realized that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, it's only about a half hour long. So, you know, it's okay. Not too much harm done. But knowing I can't do it all. Uh, And then uh, two more things uh, that have really helped me is nutrition, 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 eating whole foods and not living off of crap. That has made a huge difference for me. Um, And, you know, I mentioned earlier that I, you know, since I met my husband to current, those health issues, I had gained 50 pounds. I am one of the weirdos who is actually down more than 10 pounds since quarantine started. Uh, So, uh, but I don't want to make a big deal about that. We'll talk about it more on another episode. Um, but uh, I, I'm finding a space to eat whole, healthy, more, and my health is being able to be regained, and and that nutrition is and hydration is paramount, paramount. Let me say that again: your healthy nutrition and hydration is paramount. Um, and then the uh, the last one is um, this is silly. And we've learned it all before, but that concept of on time is late. Yeah, I'm one of those people that sometimes pushes until the very last minute when I have to go somewhere and then I'm rushing around the house and I'm pulling it all together and I'm barely getting it done and I'm sweating by the time I get in the car. And well, maybe that's exercise. Yeah, huh? But it's not a life I want to live and it increases my stress. So I've I've given myself time to show up places and Obviously, I'm not going nearly as many places as I used to, (laughs) but show up for Zoom calls and things like that, giving myself breathing room between them and making that a non-negotiable so that the pace of my life isn't frantic. And that feels good. So, so friends, I, I really hope that you get something out of this and that you get just a gem that you can take with you today that can help you realize that yes, there's a lot going on. And yes, there's a lot of good going on too. And yes, we've got a lot of problems to solve as a world. And yes, it's okay to take care of yourself. It's okay to rise up and have successes. I, I'm going to talk about this in another podcast, but I, I am afraid that we're entering a space where if you have a good day, 
that it's it's not fashionable to have a good day and we're all supposed to be miserable all the time. Um, but folks, there's billions of people on the planet. And, and yes, you can be an advocate for the issues that are important to you. And yes, you can and help enable success and progress in the ways we need to. And you don't necessarily have to make yourself miserable doing it. We don't have to unnecessarily be martyrs in all of this. So, uh, all righty, friends, holy moly. Um, my intent with all of this really is just to help us get into a frame of mind where we really can take care of ourselves. And by taking care of ourselves, we can also take care of others and really make the world a better place. And I'm a big believer that making the world a better place comes from looking at that big divide and really start thinking, how do we build bridges? And um, and, and it's not throwing a ladder across the cavern. That's not going to work. It's going to be a lot more, lot more work than that. Um, but I really think we can do that. And that's, that's my intent, um, that we have a world of respect and compassion and love and that we allow each other to be human and grow and change and be weird and quirky and all of that and live our lives and stand up for each other. And um, yeah, it's a lot. I know. So uh, I, I really hope this uh, didn't trigger anybody out there. Um, or if it did spark something in you and you've got questions, uh, send me an email, be awesome at couch to active.com. Uh, and, uh, I'll uh, be happy to address any questions on a further podcast. Whoo-wee. All right. We'll see you back on Monday with our somewhat regular, irregular programming. Take care, friends. Bye-bye. <laughs> always, always head on over to the homepage of couch2active.com and check out what our current new freebie is. Right now, you can get a download of your five minute exercise makeover on couch2active.com.